microscope. At first, it appears to be similar in composition to the mystery samples. It was rich in silica, typical in the ash of extremely powerful eruptions. But by the time Westgate concluded the analysis, his hopes were dashed. When we started to look at the samples in detail, making those comparisons, we found that in detail, they clearly are different. So we had to look elsewhere. Days turn into months, months into years, as Westgate eliminates volcano after volcano. His colleagues continue to send new ash samples to the lab, but none are matching. It looks as if this is one volcano not even John Westgate can locate. Then, in the spring of 1994, Westgate arrived at work to find yet another sample. Its source, a tropical jungle in Southeast Asia, on the shores of Lake Toba. Lake Toba lies in the northern part of the Indonesian island of Sumatra. The lake is one of the largest natural features of the southern hemisphere, clearly visible from space. What's unusual about Lake Toba is its dimensions are incredible. It's 100 kilometers long from that end up to that end over there. It's 30 kilometers wide from the upper rim behind us over to the other side. Craig Chesner, a geologist from Eastern Illinois University, is investigating how the lake was formed what we're trying to do out here today with this depth finder is to get a profile of the lake bottom because by getting a profile of the lake bottom we can interpret the history of Lake Toba much better. We're starting to get a profile over here. You can see it dropping right off. 23 meters. And that cliff face, it just must keep on going straight down almost. Most lakes drop off gradually from the shore. But Chesner finds that's not the case here at Lake Toba. It's 175 meters deep already. That's, that's incredible for just a lake. The incredibly steep slopes that drop off from the landscape up above. In some places, it's a, the, the rim is over a kilometer above lake level. Sheer drops down to the lake. And then, as you can see on this profile, it continues down beneath the lake with that sheer drop off. This steep line on the screen shows that Lake Toba is no ordinary lake. And its steep profile is not its only curious feature. As Chesner climbs high above the waterline, he finds something intriguing. Wow, there's some really big pumices in this. I can see quartz crystals, I can see biotite, and there's a lot of ash in here. Pumice and ash are telltale signs of a volcanic eruption. This rock was definitely generated in a magma chamber, but look at the incredible extent of this. It extends all the way up to the top of the cliff face here. This represents a tremendous amount of uh, magma. And the really strange thing is this is thousands of times greater than you find at typical volcanoes. Everything Chesner sees in the landscape of Lake Toba points to a huge volcanic eruption. He sends an ash sample to John Westgate. Westgate puts this sample under the microscope and things begin to fall into place. Once we had looked at the samples from Toba, lo and behold, it was exactly the same. Chesner's Lake Toba sample matches up perfectly to the mystery ash samples Westgate had received from multiple sites spanning thousands of miles across Asia. It has the same chemical composition, 
and it dates to 75,000 years old. Finally, after years of searching, Westgate has his match. Together with Zelinsky's ice cores, Rampino's ancient seashells, and Chesner's geological survey, the evidence points to an enormous eruption at Lake Toba 75,000 years ago. But if no known volcano comes close in scale today, how could such a powerful volcano have ever existed? The answer is a relatively recent discovery. A super volcano. To qualify, a volcano must produce at least 240 cubic miles of magma in a single eruption. It takes the Mississippi River nearly two years to dump the same volume of water into the Gulf of Mexico. A super volcano can put as much ash and rock into the air in just a few days. While over a thousand normal volcanoes dot the Earth, none approach the scale of a super volcano. Their eruptions dwarf even the greatest of the 20th century. When you see the footage of Mount St. Helens, it looks like a really awesome eruption. Uh, big, tall ash column. It looks like there's tremendous power there. But that eruption only erupted one cubic kilometer of magma. So, as you can see, that's very much smaller than any supervolcano eruption. An eruption thousands of times more powerful than Mount St. Helens has never been witnessed in modern times. It's almost impossible to imagine the scale of an eruption such as Toba. Toba is not the only site of a supervolcanic eruption. By studying ash samples and taking geological measurements, volcanologists are also discovering evidence of supervolcanoes in Italy, New Zealand, Japan, and the United States. Uh, supervolcanoes are, are not as rare as we might think. Um, they're all over the place. But they have very, very long times between eruptions so that we don't see them go off in historic times. In the last two million years, we know of four active supervolcanoes. Lake Toba, Long Valley in Eastern California, Taupo in New Zealand, and Yellowstone National Park, which sits on top of a supervolcano. Based on ash sample analysis, Yellowstone's supervolcano has erupted three times. Its oldest, 2.1 million years ago, was possibly Earth's most massive volcanic event, spreading ash throughout North America. Just like smaller volcanoes, supervolcanoes start with a column of magma rising from deep within the Earth. But while smaller volcanoes explode to the surface, where their magma hardens into the familiar cone shape, supervolcanoes are chiefly known for storing massive amounts of magma in vast subterranean chambers. Tobas held nearly 1,800 cubic miles of sweltering magma, enough to fill 200 Grand Canyons. We think that it might have taken a million years to accumulate all the magma that uh, was beneath Toba. As the magma and volcanic gases accumulated, pressure built up in the magma chamber, putting the Earth's crust above under incredible stress. Magma would have been accumulating beneath this area, doming up the entire terrain. It certainly would have involved new cracks opening up in the ground. After millions of years of accumulated pressure, the magma finally erupted, draining the underground reservoir. The roof of the magma chamber, though, began to collapse and sink into the magma chamber. 
This forced the silica 